Do you ever want to know what goes into a do-it-yourself 3D printer? Well, I just spent 25 hours completing the mechanical assembly of one. This is a Ratrig V-Core 3.1, and today I'm going to show you all about it. But wait, are you having trouble seeing it? Hold on, let me adjust the focus. No? Uh, I guess you're just going to have to watch the whole video and subscribe if you want to see it. All right, guys, welcome back. In part zero, I showed you how I turned this room into my war room for building a printer. Since that video, I've spent 25 hours building the entire mechanical assembly for the printer. All the belts, pulleys, lead screws, the bed, the arms, the printed parts, the belts. I already said belts, didn't I? I got everything in there that moves, except for electrons. We don't have electrons yet. Wiring is gonna be in video two. In this video, I'm gonna show you all about the fun that I had putting this thing together really fast. No, I didn't put it together fast. I'm going to show you really fast. So there's quite a few do-it-yourself 3D printer projects in the wild. And if you've only heard of one, it's probably Voron. It's kind of the Mount Everest of do-it-yourself printers because it's not an actual product that's sold by any company. It's just an open source idea of a printer. And the Voron Designs Group just simply publishes a bill of materials and a build guide. You, you have to source the 300 something parts yourself or buy a kit from a third party. If that sounds intimidating, it should because I was intimidated, which is why I didn't go with Voron, even though it seemed like the best way to fit in with the cool kids. However, I have to admit that Voron's 300 page PDF build guide is the most beautiful technical document I've ever seen. While capturing this screen recording, I got distracted for like 10 minutes scrolling through build instructions that have no relevance to my printer whatsoever. Overall, I think I would have been fine going with Voron, but I wanted to see what the other options were. Ultimately, the one I went with, Ratrig. Uh, Ratrig is a company that designs CNC machines and sells the kits for them. The V-Core 3 from Ratrig is a top-notch printer, and I was confident that a kit sold by the same company that designed the printer was going to be a good experience. Though nothing can match Voron's documentation, the Ratrig documentation is stellar in its own right. It also includes this in-browser CAD model of the printer that is true down to literally every bolt. You can open this model during the build to understand or confirm any detail of the printer, including hiding parts to show innards of gear assemblies, etc. Also, there's an official Ratrig build guide video on YouTube and a 30-ish hour recorded build stream on the Vector3D channel. Finally, like most of these projects, there's a Discord server you can join to chat with other builders or get support or otherwise just geek out about 3D printing. Ratrig has a few different printer kits, but the V-Core 3.1 is the no compromises version that comes with all the bells and whistles, including the fancy Core XY motion system. It comes in four different sizes from 200 millimeters cubed to 500 millimeters cubed. I picked the 400 millimeter cubed, which is about a 16 inch by 16 inch by 16 inch build volume. I wanted the large build volume, but the bigger you go, the more issues you're going to have with rigidity and vibrations. I also need to be able to fit it through a standard US door. And after taking some measurements and comparing to the CAD, I would be able to get it through my doors if I took the hinges off. So in this video, I'm gonna give a bird's eye view of the whole mechanical assembly, which covers the first nine steps of the V-Core 3.1 build guide. It involves building the entire frame with 3030 aluminum and all the gear assemblies, belts, motors, lead screws, and an empty electronics panel in the back. Oh yeah, and this son of a The entire EVA hot end assembly? Yeah, we'll get to him later. We'll get to him. The vast majority of fasteners for this printer are for attaching things to 3030 aluminum extrusion or attaching extrusion to each other with metal brackets. It uses drop-in T-nuts and bolts to clamp things to the inside lip of the extrusion channel. And they're very easy to use, adjust, and reconfigure. It really makes aluminum extrusion feel a lot like adult Legos. To fasten things to extrusion, you pass a bolt through the part and then loosely thread a T-nut on the other end. You slip it lengthwise into the aluminum extrusion channel, and when you twist the screw to tighten it, it rotates the T-nut, which then clamps your part between the screw head and the inside of the channel. It creates super solid connections and can be used with metal brackets to join extrusions together to make super rigid frames. You know what? I've been talking an awful lot. Let's just put on some nice music and enjoy watching the build.
Yes. Achievement unlocked. 100 pieces. It's 96 bolts and T nuts and four rubber feet. Oh, I'm already tired of this. And I thought I was done. I'm not done. So we get to do step one frame assembly. All right. And off we go. Some of them are 550 millimeters, some of them are 540 millimeters. Don't get them wrong. By the way, also buy a label maker. Not just if you're building a rat rig, label makers are awesome. Day one complete. Looking at the time on the camera, it's like three hours, 20 minutes to get all 100 bolts and T-nuts and everything squared up. Yes, this is a Z-axis motor, so there's gonna be a lead screw coming up and it's gonna lift one corner of the plate. Here's another Z-axis motor and a third Z-axis motor, and all three of those will have different lead screws and will control a different part of the plate so it can tilt it in any direction. Linear rails are low friction motion guides used in industrial machinery and higher quality 3D printers. Their motion uses ball bearings, which is super smooth, but it wears out over time. They are shipped in a protective grease, but we remove that with isopropyl alcohol. Then I can use lithium grease to lubricate the ball bearings and a PTFE oil on the metal rail to protect it from rust. Linear rail lubrication is a surprisingly complex topic and feels a little bit like a fractured religion in the 3D printing world. I'm sure someone's going to flame me in the comments for the suboptimal choices I just said I used. They're telling me to do a T-nut for every single one of these, all the way up and down for all five rails. That seems excessive. 96 more screws and T-nuts. All right, we're doing this. Ah, okay, there's a, another injury. This son of a when it twisted, it went right in my finger. Hopefully it didn't break off anything.
Yes! This is what I need to do. So that's one, two, three, four, eight different pieces that have to be stacked on each other. They have the colored arrows, and then the instructions here matches the color coding to tell you exactly what it is. Like for instance, the green is F695ZZ, whereas the light blue is 695ZZ without the F. And luckily all the baggies are marked exactly. So Yes! Core XY motor assembly is next. Ew, this one looks ugly. Be really careful when you're opening holes. The thread of the drill can just grab the edges of the hole and it just pulls the whole drill through way faster than you're expecting. And I was like gripping it like this and I was planning to move my hand once I got the drill started. Um, but I didn't have time. As soon as I started the drill, it just ran right through and into my hand. Uh, I almost went to urgent care. It was a pretty bad injury. Hey, Adam Savage said that he did the exact same thing. So, and he's been doing this for 40 years. So I, I feel a little bit better about that. Here's the story. This thing has two belts running behind it and through it. We were supposed to have run one of the belts before we put the whole assembly together. It was supposed to be running back behind here and around and through here. So the only way to fix this is to completely remove this top, which means I think I have to remove this whole assembly without messing up the belt that's already there so I can add this belt behind it. All right, then I can finally go to bed. All right, so you remember when I said that we were gonna go over the full mechanical assembly in this video? Well, apparently I lied. I packed so much into that first 15 minutes that I'm pretty sure my video editing computer is about to overheat. The kids also kicked me out of their gym, so now I have to hang out on this cold, hard, new tile floor until I find a new place to finish the printer build. I'll cover the rest of the mechanical assembly in the next video, along with something you think I would have talked about by now, which is, why am I even building this thing? What is so special about a do-it-yourself printer that you can't get from just buying one off the internet. Yeah, did I seriously not talk about that yet? I, I need a better script writer. I hope you had as much fun seeing what goes into building a printer as I did actually building it. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the rest of it. Until next time.